Welcome to ATC CAD. My name is David Atkins. As you start to download or create list routines, it's pretty normal to end up with a library of routines that you'd like to automatically load into your AutoCAD session. There are several ways to do it, and in this episode, we'll take a look at the three most common ways and discuss the method that I prefer the most. The most common way to start learning how to load a list routine is by using the app load command. Typing app load and pressing enter opens up the load unload applications dialog. This is how you'll generally start development and testing of different routines. By loading them this way, you can try out new routines, unload routines that aren't working or you don't like, and reload routines when you make changes to them. Or, if you followed our last tutorials on editors, link in the description, you may just be using the VS Code debugger. Check out the link below if you'd like to know more about that. Simply browse to the folder you keep your routines, click on the one you want to load, and click Load. Depending on where you got the routine or if you made it yourself, you may get a warning that the routine isn't signed and could have been made by a hacker trying to wipe out your drawing. Clicking Always Load will keep AutoCAD from asking again the next time you want to load it, but this does not automatically load the file every time. To do this, you will need to click on the Start Up Suite Contents button. This will allow you to add a list of different routines that you'd like AutoCAD to load without bothering you. A couple of clicks and you're done. This is the simplest way to set it up, but it does come with a few issues. For one, this list of applications isn't transferable when you get a new version of AutoCAD. This was less of an issue back when you didn't get a new version every year. Since it's stored in the Windows registry, it doesn't necessarily carry over. Also, you need to do this for every user in your company, which is quite tedious. So let's explore another method. AutoCAD comes with a .lsp file that is always loaded whenever AutoCAD is opened. This used to be called acad.lisp, but in recent versions, the name of the file has changed. In AutoCAD 2024, the name of the file is acad2024.lisp. Since AutoCAD LT 2024 added the ability for LT to use Lisp routines, this is called ACAD LT 2024.lisp. This file should not be edited. But once you find that file, you can place something else in that same folder. In Windows, the file is located in C, Program Files, Autodesk, AutoCAD 2024 Support, or the LT equivalent folder. For AutoCAD for Mac, it's in your home folder. User slash username slash library slash application support slash Autodesk slash AutoCAD 2024 slash R26.1 slash roaming slash at ing at slash support. Yeah. Whether you use the default folder or to find a new one, you can then create a new file called acad.lsp or acadltlsp for AutoCAD LT and edit that one instead. Simply start a new text document and add the code you want to load, copy and paste your various functions, and save the file with the lsp file extension. The advantage is that you can copy and paste the entire acad.lsp file to anyone's machine and it will work for any version of AutoCAD, provided you put it in the correct folder. You can also change the support path locations in AutoCAD options or in preferences in AutoCAD for Mac, which may make dealing with it a bit easier. In Windows, you open up options, go to the files tab and open up the support file search path. Add the custom path you want to use for your acad.lsp file and you can place it there instead of requiring all of your users to put it in the support folder on their own computer. But there are issues with this method. If you're working with a new routine and it has a bug, that bug may kill all of your custom routines for everyone, which isn't ideal. It's also a giant pain to manage this file when it gets too long. A better method is to use the acad.lisp file to automatically load another lisp file. This lets you keep each routine in its own file for easy editing and testing while still letting you load things automatically. The code for this is super simple. Load slash path to file slash file name dot LSP. First, a couple of things. You need to call the load command and put a space. Then you need to put the path to the routine in quotes. Finally, you need to separate folders with double backspaces. That's it. Generally, I like to add a comment below the load command to make sure I explain what the loaded command is supposed to be doing. You can put each section as a line in your new acad.lsp file 
and be done. Copy that file to any user on your network. They should be using the same mapped drive letter for it to work smoothly. And they also have access. It's easy and it's a fine method. But I admit, it's still not how I do it. Over the years, I've used something just a little different. I created a custom loading file that I call atc.lisp. Inside acad.lisp, I load atc.lisp and that's it. ATC Lisp does the heavy lifting of loading all the other routines that I want. Here's a simple version of how that works. Just a bunch of load commands with comments. I also added a line of code at the bottom that will print out a success message to let me know that everything went according to plan, which just makes me feel better. I do this mainly because AutoCAD used to use ACAD.lisp instead of the newer ACAD2024.lisp file, which meant it was common for ACAD.lisp to be overwritten whenever you upgraded. This was a bummer, I didn't like it, and I'm paranoid they may go back to that one day. If you wrote the routine yourself or downloaded it, there's a good chance it wasn't digitally signed. This will probably pop up as an error. If this happens to you, you can either tell AutoCAD that it's okay to load this anyway, or you can open up the AutoCAD options and add your Lisp file folder to the Trusted Locations section. Anything in these folders doesn't need to be signed and won't cause an error. Getting your routine signed may be important if you're selling your routines on the add-on store, but for day-to-day -day tasks it isn't necessarily needed. Just test them well before you use it on production drawings. And comb through the code and make sure you don't see things like delete file system as a command. You may choose to load a specific set of routines on a project-by-project -project basis. This isn't super common, but it can be done. In your project directory, not your regular support directory, but the folder where your drawings are kept, you can place a file with the name acaddoc.lisp or acadltdoc.lisp. This loads a different set of routines that are unique to the documents in that folder. I've never needed this, but you may be glad you have it. For most companies, having a single set of preloaded routines is great. Everyone has the same setup, and honestly, since there aren't that many CAD users who write their own code, no one really complains. Of course, that's not always the case. Here is the actual routine that I use here at ATC. In addition to loading a company-wide set of routines, it also checks to see if a user has their own set of routines, and if so, loads them as well. Let's take it line by line and see how we do that. The command setQ is how Lisp names a variable. In this case, I'm making a new variable called FilePath that is set to the actual path in my Lisp folder. By putting this here, I can change the path for all of the loads later in one place. The second line sets a variable called user. It sets it to the username environment variable with the getENV command. We will use this variable near the end. The next section has similar code for loading company-wide routines. However, instead of writing the file path every time, I use the string concatenation function to use that file path variable I set up before. The strcat function will put two or more pieces of text together. In this case, file path, the variable, is already a string, and I don't need quotes, while quickkey.lisp does need quotes. This is done the same way all the way down. In Windows, these file names are not case-sensitive. Then I use the prompt command to send a message that the file was loaded successfully. Using the backslash in character at the beginning of the prompt puts it on a new line in the command line, which I like. The last bit of code starts the process of loading a custom loader for each user. First, using the string concatenation function, it combines the file path and user variables with the string .lsp. This will be the full file name we want to look for. Next, we want to make sure this file actually exists. If it doesn't and we try to load it, then everything will break and we will be sad. So we will use an if statement. Using the find file command, we will check to see if AutoCAD can find a routine in our support folder with the same name as the user. In my case, it's looking for david.lsp. If it can find it, it loads it, as shown in the next line. The line after that is what happens if AutoCAD cannot find david.lsp. It lets us know that it failed to find a user with that username, lets me know what AutoCAD thinks the username is, again using the string concatenation function, so I can easily find that info when I need it, and stops running. 
Now, if someone in my office wants to have a custom set of routines, she can make a new file with her custom set and still have access to the company-wide set. It's a win-win. As you can see, auto-loading list routines isn't super hard. There are a lot of options depending on just how far down the custom routine rabbit hole you end up going. There is a written article on my website that has the code from this episode where you can copy and paste it if you'd like to do that. In the next episode in this series, we'll talk about why those cool routines you just downloaded aren't working. A ton of routines on the internet assume that you have some helper functions that aren't always included in the downloaded file. We'll talk about what those are and how to set them up. It's not a difficult job, but it is rather esoteric if you haven't been programming an auto list for the last three decades. Adding these helper functions and setting them up to auto load will fix a large number of problems in downloaded routines. So click subscribe so you don't miss out. Click the bell icon if you want to know as soon as it's released. And clicking the like button helps me out a lot. If you have a suggestion on where this series should go next, leave a comment to let me know. Finally, if you're interested in our AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, MicroStation, Civil 3D, SketchUp, or 3DS Max classes, check us out at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy catting.